I'd like to do today is um, is talk about studying teaching. It it there's a parallel here with research on clinical practice in medicine, which is really the heart of medical research. And this can work only if we know what to do in classrooms. So you can say, well, we'll hire smart people and we'll give them small classes and we'll invest in good materials and good training. You still have to know what to do in the classroom. Nobody says in medicine, we'll just hire doctors and pay them a lot, which we do. They get a lot of money. We'll have uh, good facilities, which often we do, for, at least for some members of the society. Nobody says that's sufficient. You've got to know which surgical procedures work. You have to know which medicines to prescribe. You've got to have rigorous evidence on the impact of clinical practice. If any policy reforms are going to have an effect in medicine. But somehow, because schools are very familiar to us, we've all been in school, and every businessman knows what to do to fix up schools. Um, but the reality is that understanding how to improve instruction is very challenging. And it's at least as challenging as understanding how to do good work in medicine. Sources as the dominant causal variable, we put the instructional regime. That's what teachers are doing in classrooms. I'll talk about what I mean by a regime. We use that word very deliberately. But that's what teachers are doing in classrooms, and that's the proximal cause of kids' learning. That's where it's happening. And that's what we need to understand. Just as we need to understand how surgical procedures and medical procedures affect patients' health, if we want to understand treatment in medicine, we have to understand the relationship between alternative approaches to instruction. About that. But we, let's say we have a, what I'm going to call an instructional regime. And we have evidence, in fact, that under very good conditions, this leads to a boost in student outcomes. The resource question is, can we achieve those outcomes with teachers who may not be as skilled, classrooms that might not be as small, school environments that not, might not be as conducive? Those are the resource questions. How much does it cost, in other words, in order to produce the effect or reproduce the effect of this instruction that we want to have? And then, so then the conclusion of this is to say that resources affect student learning by modifying the impact of instructional regimes. Okay? That's what resources do. And when we understand how they do that, we'll really know something about resources. We'll know how to invest much better than we do. Because we'll have a theoretical foundation in understanding the process of teaching and learning in classrooms. So the idea of treatment regimes is an idea that's been around in medicine for quite a while. And, you know, that's exactly what happens in medicine. You take people's blood pressure, you look at their heart, uh, their uh, blood uh, characteristics, their blood level, their uh, uh, cholesterol, et cetera. You then uh, prescribe whatever you need to prescribe in, in order to uh, tailor it to the current condition of the patient. So there's a definite parallel here in clinical research and education, clinical research in medicine.